Welcome back everybody, Silas here. I am on the road, I am headed to a secret location. I cannot disclose this location. There are some really cool cars here I'm told though, so I am looking forward to checking out what's inside this place. I don't know 100% what to expect, so I guess I'll just see you guys there. We are here. <laughs> that is the extent of the lighting so far. But, as you guys can see, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. There we go. Getting a little bit of light in here now. That's much better. Much better. Where does the guy even start in here? I guess you start over here on this side in the corner. Check out the old roadster, whatever it is. I'm not a real old car person, so I don't know what all this stuff is. I'm sure it's a Ford. He was a Ford person. But beyond that, I couldn't tell you what this thing is. Looks like it used to be a sedan and they cut it down. Pretty neat piece, but of course, you guys aren't watching this video to see that. You're watching the video to see this right here. It's definitely seen better days. As you can see here, it's got some missing floor panels, but on a car like this, you're not buying it for floor panels. You're buying it for numbers. This is a Mach 1 right here. You can almost see the Mach 1 on the fender, but the numbers are still on this car, so you can do something with the shell. That's half the battle on a lot of these old cars like this, these old muscle cars, is the numbers are gone or the numbers are messed up or they have issues with them in the computer system. And so with a car like this, yeah, it may have some rust in it, but you can replace all that sort of stuff. It's got good bones to it. Like I say, it's, it's missing the drivetrain, but a lot of that stuff you can get. Get in the tub with numbers. That's number one priority. We're going to get a video here of Andy falling off of a lift. <laughs> He's attempting to get a picture of the VIN number. I should have brought my drone. I could fly my drone up there and get a shot of it. Might have to use a ladder. Yeah. We'll check out the one on the bottom for now. Once again, it's just a bare tub. But you know what you're getting here? You know why you're buying something like this. It's not because it's in beautiful condition, it's because you can buy all the parts of these things brand new and then you can make it beautiful condition. My uncle did a 64 and a half Mustang convertible and basically all he started with was a cow. And it's got some good stuff going for it. The roof line is still good. Back here, all this area is still good. So there's definitely something you could build here. Now, if this was a, you know, a 69 Ford LTD, it wouldn't be worth the effort. But being what it is, it's definitely going to be worth the effort. This is a sharp car. Let's check this one out up here. A lot of body work has been done to this one through the years. Once again, it's missing the uh, drivetrain. The drivetrain stuff is at a different location. Uh, that'll be in a separate video. You'll have to be watching for that. But this is a really good looking car. As far as condition wise, it's not a perfect paint job. I mean, there's a few little blemishes here and there, as you can see, but it's not all rotted out. It's solid metal. It's not like they packed it full of putty and then threw paint over it. But yeah, it's, it's real metal, so there's definitely something there to work with. A lot of these cars, like this one down here, you know, you get up in the structure, and the structure's kind of rusty in it, and so that's a lot of work to replace. Whereas with a car like this one here, you don't have that issue, even though you may have to redo some of the bodywork, repaint it, put a motor, that sort of stuff back together, get it going again. At least you don't have to fix hard-to-do hard structure stuff like up in here. Sharp car. Let's keep moving. There's a lot of stuff in this building to check out. It is cold. It was 70 degrees two days ago, and now it's about 28 degrees. Look at this body right here. This is a sharp one. I kind of like this. I'm not real big on the real old stuff like this, but if I was going to do one, that there's kind of a kind of a good looking little body. Yeah, I like that. I guess the story that he gave is that uh, his dad was into the real old stuff like this at first. But then as time went on, he got into doing uh, Mustangs and a few other types of that car. And then he had some trucks, too, that he liked. So kind of evolved, but he stayed with the FOMO Co. products. Let's go check out what's in this room. We got a crew cab Ford right here. These things are getting harder and harder to find. Dent side crew cab. And just by looking at it, it's kind of dark over here, but it looks really solid. It's got some body damage to it, but I don't see any major rust. 
which is really cool. It's missing a driver's door. However, I think that driver's door was at one of the other locations that is in a separate video that I already filmed. But also, it is just a driver's door, so you can replace that. It's not like it's one of the back doors. I like crew cab trucks. I'm more of a Dodge International guy, but the Fords are good looking too. Here's a good looking one. Did a lot of woodwork to this one. That's a lot of, that's half the battle on one of these is doing the woodwork and a lot of it's already done. This truck here is not part of the group. It is a good looking truck though. So we'll take a moment to appreciate it. 3,600, probably about a 52, 53, somewhere in there. But like I say, that's not part of the deal. So we'll see if we can wiggle around over here. We'll check out this truck, I guess, first. 78 or 79 Ford. Not a bad looking truck. And here's a Bronco, about a 78 or 79. We'll go around to the other side and check that one out. 79 had the square headlights, but some of the 78s did too. So sometimes it's hard to tell. That one's a 79, this one's a 78. Okay. And here's another 69 tub, Mach 1 tub. This is either an H code. What did you say the other one? M code? H code or M code. This is either an H code or an M code. One is lit. One of each is here. As you can see, once again, it's a tub, but once again, this you're after came, numbers. <laughs> this car came out of Texas, so it's, uh, I believe. Yeah, this one here came from down south. It's a little bit better condition than the other one that came from Georgia. This is an H code. Okay, this is the H code here. The other one was the M code. Yes. I know it's not that fancy, but I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> the little window in the front. Yeah, uh, that came off of a 97 uh, um, F250. Huh. So he has... Uh, I'll let the pop-up back. So he has two of them. Oh. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's the short box, that one's the long box. Yeah, I kind of like that. And what's this tub here? This one is a 33 three-window um, piece together. Some assembly required. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a 33 three window. This is a 34 two-door sedan right here. Um, this right here, I think is part of a cabriolet tub. That's a neat body right there. And it's all there still. Even the wood's still there. Even if a guy had to redo it, at least it's there to make a pattern. A lot of these really old ones like this, the wood's gone, and then that's where it gets hard. This one here, instead of putting carpet on the floor, put carpet on the top. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see some of these. They will be out with better pictures eventually, but for now we're just kind of getting a in the raw form. This is how they've been sitting for years. Some really neat stuff in here. Let's check out this. This is a 78 he was saying. Not a bad truck. It's, it's all there at least. It's straight, a little bit of rust, but rust can be repaired. It's when they're beat up and rusty that it's an issue. This truck here, other than the quarter panels, and for a Bronco, it's really, really not that bad. Usually these things here are falling in half on you. Looks like a set of quarter panels, and this thing would be pretty well good to go. Maybe some rockers, but that's a pretty good looking truck right there. And it's the Ranger, so it's got all the, all the fancy stuff. Yeah, it looks like it's all here. All the seats are in it still. Not sure what motor's in here. Is it a... Big book, probably a 400. Is that what they put in these? Pretty sure they were putting 400s in these at this point in time. Lots of miscellaneous parts. Some of these will be with vehicles. Some of these will not be available. I don't know all the details on that at this point in time, but still a lot of neat stuff here. And a couple little buggies. You guys have seen a lot of buggies before on my channel because we have a large Amish population where I'm from. So those aren't anything new, but they definitely are neat. Fast. And then around here, check this thing out. What's this one? It's a 1918 Model T Touring. 1918. Wow. That's a sharp car. Yeah, it looks like it's done nice, too. The body's not all beat up. And a lot of times you'll see people, they'll say, that, oh, we redid it, but all they did was paint over the dents and everything. That's nice. It was a pretty solid body to start with because, I mean, they were putting this back together. I mean, this was back in the 70s, so... And it's nice that it's in a nice building to where it's not in a, you know, a, a rickety building or anything like that. A lot of times you'll see somebody will fix up a car real nice and they'll drive it for a while. Then they'll park it out in the shed behind the house and then it falls apart. And this here, if you're a Ford connoisseur, it may look like a B-series like you would see down in Argentina or somewhere like that. But this is actually just a crew cab and a Bronco grafted together. 
he was making his own because if you know anything about these, it's really hard to get a B series in America. And you, you see them sometimes in Mexico and Argentina and throughout Central and South America. But seeing one in America is really rare. Or in North or in, yeah, really North America, but United States or Canada, they just weren't that popular. They weren't really a production vehicle that was sold here. So unless it's been imported, you just don't see them. But this in here, a lot of the body work is already done. Just a little bit of finishing, put it together. You'll have a one of a kind vehicle. Pretty neat. I'd like to do this with a Dodge. They made, they did the same thing with Dodge down south where they sold this body style, but they never sold them here. So really neat piece. You can see this a little bit better. It still has the body number on it. So that's all there. So as far as title purposes go, it'll be okay to get a title on it, especially something this old. You can see down in there, all the wood's still on it. A lot of the wood is probably still usable. Like I say, what's not usable is here, at least, to make a pattern. Something like this, obviously, you have to come up with a front clip for it. But a lot of times, guys don't even run front clips. Just put a big old V8 up there or something like that. And I don't know if it's been done yet, but maybe somebody can make an electric version of one of these. Of course, they made electric ones way back in the day, but you can make a modern one, put it on a Tesla chassis or something like that. That'd be kind of wild. She There's not really parts. much up here. Yeah, I got my flashlight here. So, that's a uh, radio flyer dragster wagon I built in high school. So. Oh. <laughs> Big tires on the back. Remote controlled with servos. Huh. That's cool. That's interesting. <laughs> it had, I remember buying that wagon. Like, why? You, it's a radio flyer. It has to be a radio <laughs> flyer. So. Those are 68, actually. This gets you a bird's eye view, so you can see them a little bit better from up above. Oh yeah, a couple of bodies and some more parts. When they're like this, I mean, this you can take it any direction you want to take it. Yeah, this is a Model A Roadster body right here. So whether you want to go back originally, you can, or make some sort of street rod, whatever you want to do. So this is where you see all the 33, 34 hoods and doors, and then there's all your grills and stuff like that. Oh yeah, you can see those grills. Yeah, that's what I was expecting to see for a Ford grill. These these brown paper wrapped pieces is what's going to catch uh, most of the Mustang people's attention because those are NOS. Sheet metal. NOS, they're not Chinesium. <laughs> no, they're, they're the real deal. We bought a ton of sheet metal out of New York back in 96, 97. Those are a hard to find piece and they're worth quite a bit just because the new ones you buy anymore. So they don't line up right and well, body lines don't match and stuff like that. He held on to a lot of these because you can see that's a short nose 65, 66. Um, style fender if I remember correctly. There's a deck lid. I'm guessing that is that a door maybe? Um this is or another deck lid. It's maybe it's a fender. I don't know it's the way it's shaped it's hard to tell. It's a fender. It's a fender. Okay. It is a fender. Fender, more deck lids, more hoods. All sorts of good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. But any more. Yeah. <laughs> They're so hard to find that the damage is workable. <laughs> a damaged hood is better than no hood. Real neat stuff. You just don't see collections like this anymore, hardly. No. And yeah. Oh, there's a whole whole stack that's of grills the, in there. <laughs> that's the 34 grills, it looks like. So. And there's all the hoods. Yeah. Of course, I forgot my actual flashlight that mounts on the camera, so I'm trying to hold my phone with one hand and the camera with the other. I like that Mach 1 up there. That's a sharp-looking car. I'm not really a Mustang person, but if I was going to do it, it would either have to be the, the Shelby or the Mach 1. Those are probably the two coolest ones. I was so into the cars, I didn't even see this old pull behind grader. It's a neat piece. I've got that gigantic one out of my place. I need to take it out front and use it for advertisement or something out along the street. Here we go. Yeah, we'll keep the camera on that way if he falls, at least it was on camera. I like the color that's on this one, what's left of it. I, yeah, if the guy did it, pin it back that color, that'd be a sharp car. And I didn't have the uh, camera on when he said it, but they have a Marty report on these cars here, so they'll have all that available. That saves you some legwork of having to get one for yourself. A lot of these vehicles may not have engines in them, but they do have period correct, date code correct motors available that they can sell you separately from the vehicle. So if you buy one of these and you don't have an engine and you want to buy an engine, they can get you one. Lots of really neat cars here. Neat history, neat projects. 
lots of good restoration projects here and they're a blank canvas you can make it to your liking if you want to do it all original if you want to do it custom whatever you want to do i know this video was a little bit rushed going through that place but the reason for that is there's two reasons actually the number one reason is is right now it is 22 degrees with a wind chill of 10 degrees and we had to open all the doors up to get some light into that building and <laughs> We're frozen. It's cold. I would have spent more time going through those cars if it was nicer, but uh, they'll have them out. They'll have pictures of them. They'll have all that stuff. So if you want to see more details, if you are interested in one of those, uh, when they go up for auction, they'll have plenty of detailed pictures. Reason number two is, is I've got a long drive yet today and it's going to be pitch black by the time we get there. And so I just didn't feel like being on the road all night. We want to get out of here. Once again, I want to say thank you to the owners for letting me come out and film this collection. It's a fascinating collection. I mean, where else are you going to see that many factory 428 Mach 1s in one building? And I realize some people, they only want to buy a car if it's done. But what I like about those cars is, like I mentioned earlier, they're like a blank canvas that whatever you want to do with like those, those uh, coupes and, and the roadsters and the Phaeton, all those, they're not done yet. And so you can do the restoration or you can have somebody else do the restoration and you can do it to your liking. Once a car has re been restored, it's done. I mean, you can change it if you want to, but why bother when you can just buy something else and then have it done the exact way you want it done yeah you might have a little bit more money in it but like i say it'll be your car and you can't always think of it from monetary terms because i mean very rarely will you recoup the money you invest into a restoration that's just not how it works unfortunately it's got to be a labor of love okay i had to stop and get gas i think you can still see me it's starting to get dark really quick anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments which of the vehicles is your favorite I like the look of the red one that was up in the air, but I like the color of the uh, kind of the bluish one that was on the ground. But really, I'd have to say, honestly, my favorite vehicle out of all those, I'd probably have to say the homemade crew cab SUV thing, the, the B-Series homemade one. I don't even know what you would call that. <laughs> I mean, it's probably titled as an F-250, so I guess that's what you have to call it. But it was definitely neat getting to see all those really rare 428 cars. That's, that's the first time I've ever seen that many in one place that wasn't a car show. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I'm having a ton of fun filming this. There's three different locations I'm going to, making a video for each one. So make sure you check out all three videos. Once again, big thanks to the owner for letting me come out and film. Big thanks to Andy for setting up the deal. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find yourself an adventure. You just never know what you're going to find. We'll see you on the next one.